At the end of the first quarter, we titled our March 31st video, Marching Higher into April. In it, we laid out three reasons. We expected a continuation of the overall market upward movement into mid second quarter. The three reasons we laid out, first, the price charts, which merely reflect the supply demand for an asset looked higher. Second, market sentiment and investor risk appetite had gone from positive in late January to quickly becoming very poor at the end of February. This quick flip-flopping by investors is quite common at the start of upward moves. And finally, we once again discussed the positive historic seasonality of April and the second quarter in a third year of a presidential cycle. We're doing a quick catch-up on where we stand now, titling this one, Where a Bear Finds Better Breath. I'm Chris Paris with Oak Harvest Financial Group in Houston, Texas. Welcome to our weekly Stock Talk podcast, keeping you connected to your money. Before we get into this week's topic, please take a moment to click on the subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you'll be alerted when our team uploads our latest content. We do have a new location for our Oak Harvest investment oriented content. You can find it by typing Stock Talk with Chris in the Google search window or going to the Oak Harvest YouTube channel and clicking on the drop down tab labeled channels and clicking on Stock Talk with Chris. Well, investors, the secular bear market crowd, who was very right for the first half of 2022, continue to look very frustrated since the October 2022 lows, particularly in 2023. As of this taping, the S&P 500 was up over 8% year to date and the Nasdaq composite had rallied close to 15% against the backdrop of bank failures, hawkish Federal Reserve talk, increased China-Taiwan tensions, and an overall negative news spin on the financial networks. Here's a daily chart of the S&P 500. And here's a weekly chart. These pictures and chart look much more positive with each passing week. The S&P 500's dramatic downtrend was broken back weeks ago, and the markets have made a series of higher lows and higher highs. Is it a runaway train to the upside? No, not at all. But you don't want that if you're a bull. You want the pessimism to continue to grow even as the markets move higher. Many strategists on TV have voiced bearish opinions with an argument that only a few stocks are rising and causing the averages to gain in 2023. Stocks like Apple and Microsoft are causing oversized index gains. While mathematically, it is true that a few large tech stocks that are weighed heavily in the S&P 500 index are contributing to the index gains this year, this is always true when there are a few big companies making an index top heavy. When commodities and energies were big weights in the indexes in the, to the great financial crisis, names like Exxon and Chevron over contributed back then. I have to disagree with these analysts with their premise that the market has bad breath. In fact, on March 31st, just as the first quarter ended, an incredibly rare but bullish stock market indicator flashed a buy signal for the first time since early 2019. This indicator wasn't even triggered during the massive second half 2020 and 2021 rally that stocks had. According to Merrill Lynch, on March 31st, the NYSE triggered only its 34th Zweig breath thrust since 1930, over 90 years, and only the 14th time since 1950, over 70 years. We talked about this indicator back in the second quarter of 2020 as it was close to triggering back then, but it didn't. Here's the historical data for trading this signal. Remember, no guarantees in the stock market going forward, but this indicator has been historically very reliable and very positive. According to Merrill Lynch, over the 34 prior occurrences since 1930, the S&P 500 has traded higher 82% of the time over the next 250 trading days, with an average return of 17.5% and a median return of over 21%. Here's that summary for those 34 occasions. The indicator measures the broadness of the participation among individual issues in the broad NYSE index that contains almost 3,000 stocks. The indicator is calculated by taking a 10-day moving average of the number of advancing stocks divided by the number of advancing stocks plus the number of declining stocks. When that percentage goes from below 40%, to above 60% in 10 days or less, the indicator is triggered. According to Carson Research, in the 14 times since this has happened since markets in 1950, the markets have been higher 100% of the time, both six and 12 months later, by a wide margin. Viewers, no guarantees, of course, but here's that data. Looking at the lower right of this table, one will see that the average six-month gain for the S&P 500 has been 17.2%, and the average gain over the 12 months has been over 20%, at 23.3%. While the markets did flash a number of breadth thrusts in 2022, none of them were the Zweig indicator, which uniquely measures the speed at which breadth is expanding. Should this indicator once again prove prescient? Time will tell, but the rarity of flashing by and the magnitude of the forward price gains historically after it does, like it did on March 31st, 
argue that investors should be much less bearish in their attitudes and traders in their positioning for the coming 12 months. Investors, there is no perfect investment philosophy and there is no perfect trading tool that is all weather, outperforming every stock cycle or every economic environment. Our team here at Oak Harvest has many tools that our advisors use to help our clients meet their retirement goals and objectives. These tools are both market-based and insurance-based that we use to meet your retirement goals. The future in the stock markets are always uncertain. That's why our retirement planning teams plan for your retirement needs first and your greed second. Give us a call to speak to an advisor and let us help you craft a financial plan that helps you meet your retirement goals. Call us here in Houston at 877-896-0040 and schedule an advisor consultation. We're here to help you on your financial journey into and through your retirement years. For myself, the rest of the investment team from Troy and Jessica and all the retirement planners here at Oak Harvest, have a blessed weekend.